Hi everybody, it's Dave here from Dow Skidmore Second Hand Tyres. This is episode 30 of the Pope Restoration. At the end of the last episode, I was marking out the underside of the fore deck so that I could cover it with epoxy and then paint in where the braces, between the braces and the king plank, because the thickened epoxy will stick better to the um, underside where there's no paint. And it's going off now, it's tacky. I've left it for a couple of hours and there's no bugs stuck to it, which is a good thing. But uh, tomorrow, now because it's the end of the day, I shall paint where the paint needs to go and then think about epoxy and onto the uh, boat. I did do a dry run on the clamping and I'm going to use a combination of G cramps and some of those clamps are made out of plywood and the wedges to hold it on whilst the thickened epoxy is going off. And I'm quite pleased with the way it uh, all sat together. So that will be the next thing to do. The epoxy cured overnight nicely. I rubbed it over this morning with some acetone. When it cures, unless you put some stuff called peel ply on to the fiberglass or the epoxy, that you've done which is quite expensive um, and it's just a funny polythene stuff really which protects the uh, epoxy from the air you get this thing called an amino flush which is sort of like a waxy uh, chemical that comes out of the mix and it sort of it is it just feels waxy and it doesn't stick so well together so you can even rub it back with sandpaper to get rid of it or Use, I use nail polish remover which is a acetone and a lot cheaper than using the, uh, the stuff that you can buy in the, in the cans because I get it from Poundland and um, it takes it off as well or you can do both so I did that this morning rubbed it back with some acetone and then I put on some of the white bilge paint that I've got and I've also put some on the underside of the king plank as well just to seal that in. I think I, most of it I did with the epoxy coat anyway, but uh, it's just a little extra on the underside. So I'm gonna wait for that to dry now, and then I think I'm gonna bite the bullet and actually stick it on today. So it's gonna take a little while to go off, or to dry, paint dries, doesn't it, apparently. And then uh, I'm gonna come back and of it all on. One of the things that um, I found slightly hit and miss but I've not done too badly with it is um, estimating the amount of epoxy to mix up. It's mixed in a ratio of uh, five to one. Five of epoxy and one of hardener and the piece of uh, ply you see there was around 40 mils to cover and the rest of it went on to uh, the king plank and the the ribs just as an extra bit of uh, thickness and to prove it because also you have to pre-soak the work because otherwise the epoxy gets drawn into some of the woods and it won't actually stick properly because it's sucked away before it can actually glue the surfaces together. So, so that's why you seal it first. And you can see in some places on the, on the ply it actually a lot, seems a lot drier than, than other places because <coughs> excuse me, it got um, soaked in. You just sort of, as it's going off, you can see it. So you just sort of spread it around a bit more and uh, it helps to seal it all nicely. So uh, we'll let that dry now and then come back up. Put some masking tape around the rail where the uh, foredeck's going on so that any splurge out will run down and not stick to the rails because it's, uh, it's a bit tricky to get off sometimes and it should drop down past the boat, past the hull. The outside rails are very tight to the hull so anything 
nothing's going to run down there. There are some gaps on the inside of the hull and there's a possibility it may run down into there but uh, that won't matter so much and I might even put some something in there to catch any drips that drip off the middle so we haven't got splodges and splurges all over the uh, front buoyancy tank. So because um, when you clean it off it actually takes the paint with it which uh, isn't an incurable thing because I've got more bilge paint anyway but uh, why not just stick something in there if, it, if you can find something, just some old bags or something to do, dustbin bag. So uh, I've been thinking about this job as a gluing up job, I mean it's what, one, two, three, four, five, about six metres of uh, bead I've got to lay and that's quite a bit. I can't think of anything apart from roof in my bathroom where uh, I did so much glue in one go and that wasn't epoxy which uh, goes off fairly quickly especially if it's in a in a cup or something like that so I've got to knock it up and spread it out on something maybe a pallet make a pallet out of a bit of um, plywood and then scooch it on around that is as, as it spreads out it cools down and the curing time goes back up again and that should give me time to get it all on and then um, clamped up as well because gluing can be quite a fraught operation and uh, I know I've got all of the clamps I need and I know where they're going and that's the thing if you rehearse it a couple of times. I've had this on and off a few times now so I know it's going to, where it's going to go on and how, to, how it's going to go on and where it's got to go on to make, make it uh, you know, right. So uh, I might as well sort of I'll have a little workout of roughly how much I think for each part and, uh, and then go on from there. As I said it was 45 mil altogether to cover this and that, so probably uh, it will be if I knock if I knocked up 45 or 50 mil because I'm putting the flour with it, that really bulks it out a lot. So if I do that that much and then see how it goes, and. Uh, I can always knock up a little bit more and I'll have a rough idea of just how much to knock up. So I'll, uh, I'll do a little adding up and then I'll uh, start it and if I remember I'll turn the camera on. Okay here goes. that's that all glued and clamped down. I took 120 mils of epoxy and I don't know how many spoons full of flour, not that it really matters. It was 120 mils of uh, epoxy in this gluing job and you always wonder if you could have done with a little bit more but um, knocked it up in three batches and it was just starting to, to get a little bit stiff the first lot by the time I put the last lot on so I don't know how much of it squeezed out but it wasn't a lot squeezed out because I mixed it up quite thick and we just have to see once it's all paired back flush after it's uh, cured just how good a looking um, mating face is because uh, it's not glued, it's, it's not compressed very much. It's, it's tight enough. It's tight enough, but only just enough to just keep it all down because I don't want to squeeze it all out. But uh, I'm quite satisfied now that uh, this bit's gone on, and uh, I put loads of newspaper down to catch any spill out, and there's not going to be anything on the uh, inside. I think it's going to catch it all. In fact, 
look at inside. I put most of the uh, most of the glue to the outside anyway because it will squash back in that way. And uh, I wouldn't use so much. There's a I can see there's a lot of space between the inner rail and this the way it curves up. So that would have been wasted epoxy anyway. I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna not play around with this anymore. I'm just gonna leave it now and go in. That looks pretty nice. Just gotta trim it all flush. Give it a sand up. Coat of epoxy and I think I'm gonna put a piece of uh, woven fiberglass cloth across it as well just to strengthen it up some more because it is a little bit splintery on the outer veneer and it won't do any harm to give it some extra strength without having too much weight. It's only 6mm ply after all. And uh, think about what to do to finish it off. Whether to leave it natural coloured because it will darken down quite a lot. Or to paint it, I don't know yet. I didn't bother filming any of it because it's a bit boring. I just went round with a saw and chopped the overhang off close to the rail and then using a little block plane went round and planed it flush and sanded it and it looks quite nice there we are it's all flush I've run out a centre line again just to get the position for the I forgot what they call this it's uh a thingy. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. Stanchion, I think. Yes, it's a stanchion. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I run out the the centre line to uh, get the position for putting the stanchion on, and I've got to go back over the videos to the first one because I forgot to make a note of where it was. I think it fell off before I actually had a chance to measure from the from the prow back to where it was positioned but it's somewhere in that area there's also two um, things called fair leads but I think one of them is a replacement because it's different metal it's not bronze and they should be left and right handed to lead a rope onto the foredeck and to, to tie off on the stanchion but uh, yeah with memory what's it called But once the uh, once I've got that position, I'll drill and um, fix it, and then I shall put. I just sand it off, and then I'm going to put a sheet of um, woven fiberglass on, just to tie it all together. It is a little bit splintery because it doesn't like the veneer on the outside of that plywood. Doesn't like being bent like that. <coughs> it's only very thin and uh, that will help protect it and I think it will be better for it anyway. It's 
just enough cloth here to cover this all in one piece. And uh, just bring it down over the end, over the edge. So I'll uh, wet this out, wait for it to tack up, and then lay this out on it, and then knock up some more and spread it over as the first coat of sealer. Shame couldn't get any uh, carbon fibre. That would have been cool. Just left it naturally black. Right. There we go. It's had a coat applied all over it and we'll have a look at it and see what it's like as to whether or not to put another coat on the top. I think um, it probably will have one just to fill in the weave and uh, I think about what I'm going to do paint wise on it if it doesn't uh, suit it to look like that. I'm not sure I'm going to live with it for a while anyway, whilst I carry on with the rest. So I'm going to stop playing around with it and go down in the house for a bit, look at a bit of YouTube. <coughs> I've made up a, a squeegee. this around with and I've got a roller standing by in case it might happen with the way it is squeegeeing out. In all probability I expect that I'll varnish this in the end, this bit, rather than uh, paint it. I've been looking at it over the last few days and it sort of matches in with everything else you've got. The, the hull is green and then all the woodwork is natural colour. So I think probably I'll just varnish this in the end rather than, uh, than paint it. I think it would be too much if I painted it green. I don't think it'll look so well. Even if I put a, a border around it of, um, of the natural colour, I think it'll end up looking a bit too much if it's green as well. Yesterday I got two coats on, one early in the morning and the other one last thing in the evening before I came in. And also I cleaned off the uh, overhang and I taped it up so I could seal over the end because that stuff was too, too stiff to roll over the uh, matting. So uh, I'm going to give it a sand back now with some 120 grit. I've, sort of, I've taken off the high, high, some of the high spots with 60 grit actually by hand. Now I'm going to put the machine over it with some 120 on just to knock it down and I'll probably put on another coat and I shall seal over the edges again because it's only had one coat on the edge so I shall seal it over again and then um, that will be it probably. Once it's gone off and uh, hardened up I'll go over it again with a sander and then I'll put some yacht varnish on it. I think I'm going to leave it natural and uh, I'm pretty sure that's the way to go because it matches it well with the rest of the boat so that's going to be uh, the way it is I think. It looks good enough. It's obviously a different colour to the rest but then it's a slightly different wood but it's sort of nothing's quite the same colour all the way through anyway so it matches in because it doesn't match. So I'm going to do that now. Just been sitting here 
wait for my coffee to cool down to drink and uh, I've turned my mind to something I may have alluded to in one of the previous videos about a, um, a technique I've seen for finishing off a piece of wood just to give it a bit of a decorative um, sort of theme or whatever you'd call it um, and that was to make a scratch cut stock out of a piece of wood and a screw head and just knock one up here it is it's very simple Got the screw screwed in and you run it around the work a few times and then with a bit of sandpaper in not much just a little bit you can make the edges a bit more decorative and that's what I was going to do around the rails and probably around the hatchway as well it um, doesn't look too bad but if you imagine that's the rail I think maybe the groove in the top would hold water but obviously on the faces it would just show up and look decorative so I think maybe I might just do it around the outsides and insides rails and not on the top or underneath although possibly underneath might work as a drip arrester but uh, it works really well it's nice and simple and you just drag it along like that so you've got a nice sturdy block to keep it all square and also this is made of a piece of MDF with melamine on the outside like brick kitchen worktops so that makes it nice and slippery as well this is one of those all or nothing things you've got to commit yourself to doing it else you can't stop halfway through what do you reckon? We'll go for it. I've always intended to do it anyway, ever since I saw it. Here we go. Because of the way I've got the slot of the screw turned, it's actually cutting really quite nicely, pulling out a, a swage. And because of the obstacles, it's going to stop short all the time, which is once again pretty cool, I think. Rather than finishing right up to something. when I've done it all. It's turned out to be quite easy and quick to do. Probably a bit different if it was oak. But basically you get the scratch stock, hold it under there, it's not going to rub against the uh, hull, and just work it 
backwards and forwards along there, clean out the swarf. And then, first of all, taking a piece of 80, uh, 60 grit, this is P60. And then, with the folded edge, just inside, and working all the way along, backwards and forwards, and then a little bit up, so you're going against rubbing away some of the top of the channel and then a little bit down and just sort of working in long sweeps like that and then I've got some 150 here which I've done the same thing to just folded it a nice tight edge feel it into the slot and do the same thing again up and down and then once that's done just back to the 80 and start to roll off the underside I thought earlier on about putting a channel in on the underside but I can't because I've put the epoxy on the underside but this face is going to be oiled and the tops and then just start rolling it over just check it and it'll end up with a rollover on it a bead now obviously in certain cases with certain types of work you can do that with a router and probably do it all in one or two passes but this isn't normal woodwork this is a boat and there's not a lot of places where you could get a router on here to uh, run around and get something nice and even so you've got to do it all by hand but it's pretty quick I've really gone down the whole of this side notched it both top and bottom I'm not going to notch the top of this bit for obvious reasons but uh, the, uh, the whole process doesn't take too long I've been in spare moments over the last couple of weeks just going through and sanding up between the rivets and we've got a little bit more to do now because of the overrun of the um, epoxy but uh, that sort of stuff that you can do whilst you're waiting for your coffee to go cold and uh, it's a, just a little extra feature on the uh, on the side and I'm pleased I've done it because I like the idea of it and it's a traditional thing that you'll find on old boats they'll do that just to make a feature of what would otherwise be a, a bland plank of wood and it's done in much the same way in the old days as well so keeping with the tradition same as the copper nails so that's something I can do over the time if you notice we're getting to the point where we're starting to do finishing work now and tying thick loose ends up I've still got the knees to make for the thwarts but there isn't too much left now apart from finishing work on here and obviously getting the old tow hitch fitted to the car which I shall film as well and that's for the for the near future and that's one side all done on the outside I've uh, just set it up on this bit because this has got the best contrast to show you the effect I've put I think about five layers of epoxy on the foredeck and then three coats of yacht varnish or exterior varnish anyway and oiled the hatch and the hatch around along with the in and out whales and the bench seat and I'm just starting on the transom now there's a 
just put my first coat of thin linseed oil on and then I shall move to the outside so I don't get it all over my t-shirt. The boat's outside in the sun now catching some rays and uh, everything's sort of warming up in the sunshine. It's been indoors for so long I thought I might just get it out there and also it's made me some room here so that I can creosote the floorboards. Now this is an idea I got from Roger Barnes who has a wonderful little sailing dinghy of French design and he creosotes the floorboards on his boat rather than varnishes or oils them because uh, obviously if they get wet any varnish on them will be slippery and uh, creosote's a nice usable sort of finish it dries, soaks into the wood and uh, like the oil, the linseed oil can be reapplied at any time really but uh, it just seemed to make sense to me to uh, have a go at that as well it's a lovely warm day again probably too warm to row <laughs> anyway I'll show you what I've done on the foredeck I've mounted two fair leads and the cleat these fair leads are new ones because the uh, others I had were both one handed these are left and right handed and I thought that would look better on the boat well, they are a touch big that's the smallest ones they had at sharpen and rights very reasonable price and the screws to mount them all and the center cleat the cleat that you can see in the center there uh, was on the boat originally and it was hanging on by a thread you made me remember but uh, I'd like to put something underneath each of them as a gasket but I haven't got any car in the tube I'm loath to chop up the inner tubes that were on the old wheels because well they haven't got any holes in at the moment obviously if they were punctured in any way then I would have used one of those but uh, I'll find something and I'll be able to lift them up and uh, put the gasket underneath I think it just finished them off nicely if you have a bit of gasket underneath rather than straight onto the wood and also I put the Rolex back on these ones are really good actually they uh, lift up and lock into place or they lift up and drop down and they're out of the way apparently uh, according to a couple of people I know they can get in the way if you've got the fixed ones or the ones you have to pull out all the time so uh, they're a nice elegant solution I think really and I was lucky to get them with the boat a couple of the jobs still left to do on here apart from the positioning of a couple of cleats at the back end is to uh, run a fillet of epoxy down the keel to bury the nuts and bolts which you can just see there it'll probably be about 15 15 mil maybe something like that deep I was a little bit worried about the fact that epoxy creates a lot of heat when it um, is curing but I don't think it's going to be an issue with this because it'll be over quite a wide area I say it's 15 mil maybe it's between that and there, a bit a bit less and on the bilge I shall just cover them with uh, a blob of thickened epoxy and a tab it in with some of the epoxy ribbon as well just to cover them over because I don't think it'll be very pleasant if you uh, slip and fall on one or uh, catch a, a foot on one with bare feet uh, they're not too proud but it will just sort of give some rounded off cushion to stop them from digging into you well, I've got to go and get some of this roofing uh, epoxy which funnily enough has been used on this roof that you can just see here over the back of my house and on my next door neighbour's bathroom roof we've got to do ours as well so there may be I'll have enough in one tub to do both jobs. It's a, a, a latest sort of um, idea for roofing and it's meant to last a long time. The roofing felt stuff is just purely bitumen all just mashed together and rolled out flat. It doesn't even have any hessian in it or anything to give it any strength and after about 10 years to the day virtually it'll give up the ghost and start leaking. 
and uh, this is the newer thing for roofing stuff with. It looks pretty good. A guy who done our roof does it as uh, one of his specialities. And it is virtually, I think it's uh, some sort of fiberglass and then this big buckets of epoxy. It can be used for many applications. The trouble is it has a very weird ratio of hardener to the epoxy when you mix it up. So it's no good for doing most of the jobs on the boat because I'm only using a few teaspoons full at a time. So uh, when you've got the ratio somehow, I think it's 250 to 1 or something, it's one of them. And it's temperature based as well. It's, uh, it's not very practical to mix up in small batches. But it'll be ideal for filling the keel to cover the, the nuts and bolts. Aha! Problem solved. I remember buying a tyre in a tube for a bicycle uh, some time ago to use as um, what they call them uh, ranger bands, and uh, I never got around to using it. But I remembered I had it in the workshop, so uh, I'm going to make some gaskets up for the forecleat and fair leads, and I'll have some ranger bands too. I've sliced off uh, six slats with the circular saw off the side of a piece of the uh, original plank of oak I bought and I'm going to put them through the bending iron now and make the uh, knees for the thwarts. I'm going to do four knees for the centre thwart and just two to support the front end of the front seat because it's on a, a pad that's equal in size to that one which are also acting as buoyancy chambers and it's held underneath the front of the hatch cover so it's all well supported I just put a couple on there just as an extra support and just to look good really I mean, strictly speaking, I suppose, they should go underneath to support from underneath because all the weight is downwards on that end, front edge. But I'm just going to hook it underneath the rail and uh, that should do the job. I'm just waiting for the bending iron to heat up to temperature. It's turning trips of water to steam but I want it so it spits it right off because then it drives the steam into the wood so it's not far off now. I've got an off cut here that's quite thin it's about two mil thick very flexible anyway but you put some water on it and it's not quite turned into steam yet but it is getting to the point where it will bend nicely start here it popping and it, uh, it's put a permanent bend in there. I think this is going to go a lot better than the, the last attempt boiling in with the burko. But these are more like three mil thick. Three, three and a half mil thick. I think they'll uh, they'll still go because it's pretty easy wood to bend white oak. I'm going to do one long and one short from these because I'll get them all out of these six then. And I'm just going to bend them so that they follow the form on this, this curve that I've made on this piece of wood which I'm then going to bolt down and glue them together in two strips to uh, give, me, give me the thickness and the strength I want. It's more or less there. I 
Yep, that's balling instantly now. So, I'm going to start with this one and I'm going to go for a short one first and start wetting it where I need to bend it. heating it up. You feel the wood start to relax. quite precise where you want the bend to come. You hold it for a little bit, the heat goes out and it stays stays bent. work through methodically, warm it up, let the steam get in there. I haven't pre-soaked these ones either. I was hoping that I could get away without doing that. Mark with your fingers where <coughs> you want to make the next part of the bend. So you always keep ahead of, keep on top of where you're wanting the bend to come. Fibre breaking off on the end on the edge but I'm going to be sanding them and the ring once it's glued together. Pretty much done now. It's the last little flare. You didn't see that bit, did you? Just 
just nip it in. To... some more of these and then I'll get back to you just to make sure that things went right I thought I'd do one as a test first so I drilled some holes to take the clamps to keep the work bent around the former and uh, let the glue go off for a couple of hours Let's see how it went strong. Yep, just a little bit of smoothing off on the sander and that will go nicely inside the, uh, the boat. Right, so I'm out. Make up just a template to bend. There's a guide to bending the, um, the work and then I can be gluing them up one by one. From that, that should speed things up a little bit. Well, there's the first four of the knees fitted to the thwart. Not sure if it's as elegant as I imagined it to be to start with, but uh, as a first go, it's not too bad. I mean, really, that seat ain't going anywhere anyway, very much, but uh, it's just a finishing touch to it. I can always change it through the winter season if I come up with another idea. But um, for now, it's all I've got. It doesn't look too bad. The uh, four deck seat, or the four seat, I'm in two minds about that at the moment, so I'm reserving judgment on it. It isn't going anywhere anyway, because I've sat on it enough to know that it's stable even without any fittings at all because it's fitted underneath the uh, fore hatch and the boat slopes away at quite an angle away from the seat and when I get it tucked under the rail it doesn't look very good and I don't know it doesn't look quite as good, it looks a bit long and flimsy and spindly. I know there's only one of the two laminates there. Possibly it might need more than two to make it look a bit more solid. But with that and the step in the side as well, I think uh, a slightly different approach might be uh, in the offing. But at the moment I can't come up with any ideas. Also. Uh, it just is a, there's a couple of angles going on there which need a little bit of thought. So it's possible that a different idea might come into use for that. Well, I've just sat here now and had a cup of coffee and uh, thinking about what to do next. And I've got some thinking to do and some working out to do. And so, well I've been sitting around having a cup of coffee and thinking about what next to do. As you can see the workbench is pretty full up with stuff so uh, maybe the first thing to do is to tidy that away. And then I've got some bits and pieces to think about like securing the hatch whilst it's not being used as a table and um, some other bits and pieces with the boat 
also with the car I've got to start really seriously thinking about uh, the tow hitch now so I'll have to get that up here one day and have a good look at what's involved in that before I start because it involves drilling some holes so I think I might just uh, finish this one here I would like to say thanks to everyone who commented on my previous video about hammocking uh, I'm knocked out by the response and there was some helpful advice and tips and also some encouragement that maybe because I didn't get on with it it's not the end of the world um, I, uh, I've always enjoyed sleeping on the ground anyway <laughs> and uh, I certainly made up for the sleep I lost whilst trying to sleep in the hammock by going back onto the ground and uh, it is comfortable enough the sleep mat I've got is good it's only a cheap one but uh, I enjoy sitting I enjoy sleeping on it and uh, it's not the end of the world it was just something that uh, I thought I'd uh, try and uh, hopefully I would have liked it I do sort of like the idea but uh, if it ain't to be it ain't to be so thanks to everyone who responded to that and uh, I enjoyed reading the comments and uh, you've all got an answer as well so if you haven't checked back it took me a little while because of uh, other stuff I had going on to actually get around to replying but I've replied to everyone so I'm going to say thanks for watching this one and uh, I'll see you all soon cheerio